Welcome back, everybody, to the Philadelphia Eagles franchise here on Madden 22. Today's game is a very, very big one. Week 7, Sunday Night Football at home against our in-state foes, the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Eagles are red hot as we have won four in a row. The Steelers have won up that. They are currently winners of five consecutive games. So this is certainly a big matchup for both teams as... Both of these squads look like contenders in their respective conferences. After starting 0-2, the Eagles have won four in a row. It hasn't been pretty, but they are finding ways to win games. On the other side, the Steelers have won five in a row. Both of these teams are definitely led by their offenses. Two of the highest scoring teams in the league. The Eagles actually lead the NFL in points per game, with Pittsburgh not too far behind in fourth. The difference has been the defense. The Steelers have the third least scoring defense. The Eagles are a little bit closer to the middle. And obviously, Philadelphia has been very inconsistent on that side of the ball this season. A lot of the reason why these offenses have been so good is because of the quarterbacks. And both of these teams have new starting QBs from a season ago. For the Eagles, it's Xander Vanderwall, the talented lefty who spent his first two seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They then drafted Bjorn Syverson in the first round, and they pretty much let Vanderwall go. And obviously, he was traded to the Eagles. So far, that decision has been a home run for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bjorn Syverson's been one of the best passers in the NFL. He's currently second among all starters in passer rating, only trailing Jordan Love. And even he has had a bye week in there. So that just shows how good Bjorn Syverson has been through the first six games of his career. Since the week one loss, he has thrown for 14 touchdowns and no interceptions and has not had a passer rating lower than 116.3. So clearly the Steelers are very happy with their decision to pick Bjorn Syverson seemingly out of nowhere and let Xander Vanderwall go. I think this is going to give Xander Vanderwall an extra chip on his shoulder here against his former team and... I imagine there was some bad blood and some harsh feelings when these two sides split up. Vanderwall has been far from perfect so far in his first six games with the Eagles, but I think overall he has been pretty solid. Last week was arguably his worst statistical game of the season, but a win is a win at the end of the day, and I think overall, although he has not been as good as Bjorn Cyphers, and he's been quite solid. This Steelers team is loaded on both sides of the ball. On their defensive line alone, you got TJ Watt, Cameron Hayward, Stephon Tewitt, Von Miller. They have a great back end as well, led by Minka Fitzpatrick. And they have plenty of talent on offense, led by Najee Harris, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Deontay Johnson. This is a really well-rounded Steelers roster, and we are going to have a hard time stopping them. The focus here is going to be on stopping the pass. We know Bjorn Cyperson has a cannon, so I really wanted to focus on the deep pass. I am confident in our run defense. We were able to limit Joe Mixon quite a bit last week in our win over the Bengals. Hopefully we can do the same here against Najee Harris. On offense, it's simple. Run the ball. That's been our game plan all year. There's no reason to stop that now. So let's get into this game here. A massive Week 7 matchup here at home on primetime football. So with all the stakes here, with both of these teams being really good, with both of these teams being sort of rivals, being in the same state, and obviously the quarterback drama. This game is already big as is, for, but for it to be on primetime football and the whole country is watching, I don't think anybody has a bigger chip on their shoulder right now than Xander Vanderwall, and he has a lot to prove, not only to his former team, but the NFL alike, and he wants to show that even though Bjorn Syverson has been very good, maybe the Steelers did make a mistake in letting him go to the Philadelphia Eagles. So the Pittsburgh Steelers will open this one on offense, and that means we're going to get a look at the University of Montana prodigy, Bjorn Syverson, who's been fantastic this year as a rookie. Syverson has gone from playing in the FCS to playing in the NFL, and it has been a seamless transition here for the six foot seven, 250-pound quarterback with a rocket arm. First play from scrimmage here for 25. Syverson looks to throw it. He has time, and he connects with Eric Ebron for a quick gain. You know Bjorn Syverson must be really good if his pass was catchable for Eric Ebron because Ebron drops a lot of passes. So that must have been a perfect throw by Bjorn Syverson. Am I a Salty Lions fan about the whole Eric Ebron thing? Yes, I am. I don't care. Third and 11 now from the 47. It is intercepted. C.J. Thomas picks off the pass and the Eagles quickly force a turnover. 
We're just about a minute into the ball game, and Philadelphia's already made a play as Jabari Achebe is injured. He seemingly gets hurt every week. It has been a major concern with Achebe here. It's not a serious injury. He'll return to the game, but it happens every week, I swear. So now Philadelphia has it on offense. Nice little juke move by Taswell Hubbard as he gains about 18. Hubbard had one of the best games of his career last week against the Bengals, rushing for 120 yards and three touchdowns, making fantasy owners very, very happy. Following play from the 26, Vanderwall connects with Devontae Smith, who tries to leap into the end zone. He's a little bit short, but still a nice gain of 25, and that'll bring the Eagles to the 1. The only issue with the Eagles has been their red zone offense. They have struggled in the red zone as it's a third and goal. Vanderwall scrambling, looking for somebody open. It's Ty Keem Keon with the score, and the Eagles are on the board. A pretty good start here for Xander Vanderwall. His first drive is a very good one. It leads to a touchdown, whereas Bjorn Syverson's first drive was a turnover. Syverson's first interception since week one. So now the Steelers have it back. There's a nice little gain of about 13 yards for Najee Harris, the fourth-year pro out of the University of Alabama. Second and eight now from the 40. Back to Najee, and he is stuffed in the backfield. Isaiah Simmons brings him down. Simmons has continued to get more comfortable as the season has gone along here, obviously joining a new team after spending his first four seasons with the Arizona Cardinals. Third and 12 now from the 37. Pittsburgh looking to convert. Najee Harris is open. Bad coverage by Bobby Wagner. And Najee is able to convert. A nice first down there for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That'll keep the chains moving. Their offense needed to get some semblance of momentum, and I think that can definitely help them. Third down and nine here at the 47. Bjorn Syverson looking to throw it under a little bit of pressure, and he is incomplete. Trying to get it to Juju Smith-Schuster. But Cleland Farrell hit him as he was throwing the football. So that forces a punt. And a rough start for Bjorn Syverson continues as the Eagles have it back. Vanderwall on first down goes short for Tazwell Hubbard, who makes a nice play after the catch. Obviously, Hubbard does not make a lot of plays in the air. Of course, Rosemont St. Clair is the receiving back. But it's good to see Hubbard making a nice catch. Third and five. Vanderwall under pressure. It's incomplete. Von Miller was the one with the hit in the backfield. TJ Watt as well was there. And that's going to conclude the first quarter. Pretty good start here for Xander Vanderwall. He has definitely outplayed Bjorn Syverson so far. And the Eagles as a team are looking pretty good. They lead 7-0. So now the Steelers have the football back. Two pretty pedestrian drives so far as that pass is somehow caught by Eric Ebron. He does lose a yard though. Good pass rush and good tackle there by C.J. Thomas. That'll make it a third and three. Handoff for Najee Harris. That's going to be close. I don't know if he got it. Good play by Bobby Wagner, but they will give him the first down. So the chains will move, and the Steelers are going to keep the drive going. Following play from the 29, it's caught by Deontay Johnson. Johnson with nothing but green grass ahead. There he goes. Off to the races. A 71-yard touchdown, and we are tied up. A big play by Deontay Johnson. It looked like Nehemiah Richardson tried to play for the ball, and it backfired. It seems like whenever Nehemiah Richardson tries to go for the interception, it usually doesn't work out. It seems like all of Nehemiah Richardson's interceptions are when he doesn't go for the ball, and he just happens to be in really good coverage. So hopefully he doesn't go for the ball anymore, because that seems to usually not work. Big hit there by the Steelers' defense. Still a nice first down run for Vanderwall, as Adam Thompson, a former Westlake Hornet, is injured on the play for the Steelers. Third and ten. Vanderwall under pressure and it's intercepted. Joe Juwan Williams picks off the pass and that'll certainly give the Steelers some momentum. A big time turnover there and when I initially saw the play I thought there was some contact, maybe a pass interference, but as we look at the replay, not at all. That's just a bad throw by Xander Vanderwall who completely mistimed the route by his receiver JT DeMarco and now the Steelers have it. Second and seven. Bjorn Syverson goes short for Najee Harris. That'll be a loss of five, and it's going to count as a run for poor Najee, who's averaging under two yards a carry. The Eagles' run defense has had back-to-back -back really good weeks after a very slow start to the year. Third and 12, screen for Najee Harris. He is quickly tackled by the rookie Edmund Orient. Orient has continued to get better and better as the season has got along here, and I think the rookie has made some really good progress. Fourth and six, it's a 51-yard field goal attempt. Dear God, what the hell was that? Not even close. No good there. The game remains tied at seven. So the Eagles defense gets the stop. They get it back with about five and a half minutes left in the first half. 
on first down. Vanderwall connects with Devontae Smith, who makes a nice play to the 36. Of course, Smith is in a contract year. I would expect him to get a big chunk of change this offseason, most likely from the Philadelphia Eagles. Third and seven now. Vanderwall goes back to Smith, but it's dropped. That was a good throw, but Smith was unable to hold on to the pigskin. So it's now going to lead to a field goal attempt. This one from 50 yards out for Zebediah Phoenix for second. Goes right down the middle, and the Eagles lead 10-7. Zebediah Phoenix has been fantastic this season, and he's going to keep that going to put the birds ahead 10-7 with about three minutes left in the first half. On first down, Syverson's pass is intercepted. Isaiah Simmons with the INT, and he is going to swerve his way into the end zone for a pick six. Isaiah Simmons with a huge defensive touchdown, and the Eagles are up by two scores. Bjorn Syverson has not thrown an interception since week one, and he has thrown two here in the first half. So the Eagles now lead by 10. The Steelers have it back. There's a good run by Najee Harris, which will bring us to the two-minute warning. The Eagles certainly had the momentum. All of the defensive players were in the zone after the interception touchdown. Now it's just Nehemiah Richardson is on third and one. It's a screen for Najee, short gain of two. The Steelers seem to really like these screen passes, and I guess it's working. Here's a short throw for Ebron, who makes the catch to the 42. Again, I'm surprised Ebron caught it. He doesn't do that a whole lot. I bet he was yapping his mouth, too, there at the end of the play because that seems like something he'd do. Third and ten now. 55 seconds left in the quarter from the Philadelphia 42. Steelers with two timeouts. Syverson goes short for Smith-Schuster, who breaks the tackle from Richardson and gains 19. A nice play there for Juju. Pittsburgh calls timeout number two. The Steelers are moving it pretty nicely down the field here. They know they got to score here before halftime. They don't want to be down by two scores with the Eagles starting on offense in the third quarter. On first down, Syverson is quickly sacked by Jabari Achebe. Although it's been a rough year for Achebe, mainly because of injuries and he's just been banged up. Still good to see him getting a sack. 50-yard field goal attempt. Doink! It's good! It looked like it went off the camera, but it's still going to count. So the reason why is because it went over the crossbar, and once it hits the camera, it counts as good. So the field goal is a success there for the Steelers, as that's going to end the first half. Pretty close start here, but the Eagles do have the upper hand as they lead 17-10. to Xander Vanderwall has outperformed Bjorn Syverson, but Vanderwall did struggle in the second quarter after a great first quarter. I want to continue to focus on running the ball. We've barely ran it in the first half, so we got to run it more here in the second half. Our pass defense has been very good so far, and Cyberson hasn't really thrown anything from past 20 yards, so instead of focusing on the deep pass, we're going to focus on the intermediate pass. To open up the third, it's going to be a third and three. Vanderwall just has to get rid of it. Xander Vanderwall has only completed one of his last nine passes. Ever since the end of the first quarter, he has been completely off. Third and six now for the Steelers. There's your typical Eric Ebron drop. That's the Eric Ebron we all know and love, so... Instead of an easy first down, the Steelers have to punt it away, and the Eagles have it back. Third and six. Vanderwalt has an open man. It's Keon, but the pass is offline. Both offenses struggling here in the second half as the Steelers get it with good field position. Najee Harris with a gain of 20 to the 13-yard line, and unfortunately it's Joko Unwosu hurt on the play for the Eagles. That's not ideal. Pittsburgh now at the 11. Here in the red zone looking to tie the game up as it is going to be a second and eight. Bjorn Syverson looks to throw, and he goes short, and that one will go to the two-yard line. It's for rookie Donal Fontaine out of South Carolina, the second rounder with the reception. Now third and goal here from the four. The Steelers' offense is struggling here in the red zone, looking to punch it in. Bjorn Syverson connects with Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't know why C.J. Thomas ran away from Juju once Syverson was throwing the ball. That was a pretty bad play by Thomas, who doesn't make many bad plays, but that one, not ideal. So now we're tied at 17. The Eagles have it back. Their offense has kind of gone ice cold, and they got to show up, but that's not going to happen if Vanderwell is going to keep having passes like that, completely missing his receiver. Now a second and 10 here from the 25. Again, it's going to be a pass. This time he does connect. It's J.T. DeMarco, the rookie out of the Ohio State University with a gain of 22 yards. Good play there for DeMarco. First down now from the 47. It's going to be a handoff for Tazwell Hubbard with blocks down the field. He gets it inside the 35. Hubbard only has six carries today. He needs to get the ball more because he's performing at a very high level, and he's one of the hottest running backs in the NFL right now these past couple of weeks. 
First down back to Hubbard. Bounces by the blocker. Hubbard with another first down run. Wrapped up by Minka Fitzpatrick and Threns at around the 18-yard line. Another great run for Hubbard who's currently averaging about 10 yards a carry. That is really darn good. Third and eight now for the 16. Vanderwall dancing in the pocket. He goes short for DeMarco who tries to get the spin move on Fitzpatrick but is unable to get more than five. Good tackle there by Minka, so that'll force the field goal team to come out. A 28-yard chip shot here for Zebediah Phoenix. Pretty much the same length as an extra point. The kick is good until the Eagles are back on top as it's now 20-17. to The offense needed a good drive there, and even though they only scored a field goal, at least it's something. So now Pittsburgh has it back. About a minute, 10, left in the third as Syverson is crushed on first down by Josh Uche. Bjorn Syverson's going to feel that hit tomorrow. He just took a pounding, losing nine as a result. And that'll make it a second and 19. Backed up at the 11-yard line. Five wide set. Syverson looking to throw it under more pressure. He is sacked in the end zone. It's going to be a safety. Fletcher Cox and Cleveland Furl both sack the quarterback in the end zone. And so the Eagles are going to add two points on the board. They now lead by five, and they get the football back. Second and ten, final play of the quarter. Vanderwall crushed under pressure by Jacob Phillips, and so that'll end the third quarter. A pretty good quarter for the Eagles, I guess. They lead by five and have the ball, but it's a third and 24. Vanderwall looking to throw it, and it's actually a dime for Keon, who drops it. Xander Vanderwall has not been the most accurate today, but I've got to say, his receivers haven't really done him any favors. Devontae Smith had a bad third down drop. Now Keon has one. The Eagles offense just seems out of sorts right now. Third and one. Johnson jumps for route. Deontay Johnson off to the races for another 50-plus yard touchdown. What was Nehemiah Richardson doing there? That's the second time he did that today. Again, he tried to play the ball, but at least the first time he sort of timed it right. That was just awful by Nehemiah Richardson. He's not much of a gambler like that, but he has gambled twice today, and he's gone a big 0 for 2. Pittsburgh trying to add 2, and they do. Good catch by Najee Harris, despite great coverage by Winston Johnson. So the Steelers get the touchdown. They get the two-point conversion. Now they lead 25-22, and now we get to see what Xander Vanderwall is made of in the big moments against his former team, and he's still doing stuff like that. Can't happen. That's an easy gain of 15 yards for JT DeMarco, but because of the bad pass, it's not going to happen. Third and 10, short throw for St. Clair, who gets crunched by the defensive back. That's JoJuan Williams who did the interception earlier. So the Eagles have to punt it. Now they need to put the fate of this game into the hands of their defense, and that's a good start. Najee Harris loses three, wrapped up by Isaiah Simmons, who has been all over the field today. Simmons has been a beast in this game. Second and 13 now from the 32. About seven minutes left to go. Bjorn Syverson under pressure from Cox. Under pressure gets it to Ebron who gets the first down before getting popped by Deshaun Elliott. Nice play there for Eric Ebron. The Steelers are really moving it nicely down the field right now. This is not good for the Eagles defense, but there's still plenty of time as on first down. Syverson under a lot of pressure goes back to Ebron who stiff arms two defenders at once. Where was this in Detroit? God damn it. A gain of 25 for Eric Ebron. And the Steelers offense is really in rhythm. Here is Syverson. Goes short for Juju Smith-Schuster. He brings it to the one. And Pittsburgh is inching closer and closer to the end zone. Juju's had a great game here for the Steelers. Him and Deontay Johnson. Along with, unfortunately, Eric Ebron. First and goal at the one. Najee Harris punches it in. Winston Johnson is hurt on the play. This fourth quarter has just been an absolute disaster for the Eagles. And I know that's not the first time we've said that this season. Because the Eagles have choked a number of leads. This is just another one added to the list. Second and eight. Good throw and good catch by Dozier Baxby. Hopefully Xander Vanderwall can get back into it now. Because if not now, it's going to be never today. On first down, Vanderwall scrambling with a great throw for Delonte Smith. Who brings it to the 46. It seems like Vanderwall is starting to look more poised in the pocket. His throws seem to be quite a bit better on this drive as on first down. He gets another great pass for Devontae Smith who is pushed out of bounds. That kind of looked like a late hit for me, but no flag. Questionable call, but okay, it is what it is. Under three minutes to go now from the 25. 
Vanderwall again looking to throw in, and it is somehow caught by St. Clair to the 14 as Cameron Hayward is hurt. Xander Vanderwall is launching dimes on this drive. Where has this been for the past two and a half quarters? Second and 13, short throw for J.T. DeMarco. He gets the first down to the four-yard line. The Eagles are going no huddle. They want to score here before the two-minute warning. Second and four, handoff for Tazwell Hubbard. He is in with 2.01 to go. Touchdown for Tazwell Hubbard, and it's a three-point game again, 32-29. So the offense comes up clutch, and now it's time for the defense to get a stop here. I think the Eagles' defense hasn't been too bad today, particularly the run defense, but they have struggled here in the fourth quarter, and if the Steelers can get this first down here, they'll be in business. Third and three, it looks like it's going to be a pass. Trip still left, two on the right. Cypherson looking to throw it, and he has a wide open man. It's Juju Smith Schuster hit hard by Richardson. The Eagles call their second timeout. So now, best case scenario, unless the Eagles force a turnover, is they'll get the ball with no timeouts and about 20 seconds left. A first down here would officially end it. Second and seven. Vanderwell hands it off for Najee Harris, and that looks like the dagger. Harris brings it to the 34 yard line, and that will be your ball game. The Pittsburgh Steelers will hold on. They win it. 32-29, and the Eagles' four-game win streak has come to a close here on primetime Sunday Night Football. The Steelers have now won six in a row. A big win here for Pittsburgh, who look to be major buyers this year at the trade deadline, which will be in the next episode, keep in mind. A lot to digest here with this game, and it really started off well. The first half as a whole, the offense was pretty good, the defense was great, and then it just kind of fell apart in the second half. Bjorn Syverson did have the two interceptions, but other than that, I thought he played really well, and he showed today that he is legit, and that he is probably better than Xander Vanderwall. Vanderwall was great in the first quarter, great late in the fourth quarter, but bad for the rest of the game. He is just so painfully inconsistent, and we were talking about his drive-to-drive -drive inconsistencies earlier in the season, but it's starting to become a real issue now, and he's got to figure it out. I wish we did more on the ground. Tazwell Hubbard only got 10 carries, but he did really well. 77 yards and a score. Rosemont St. Clair, though, four carries, negative one. What's that about? So this is where the issue lies. Look at guys like Juju and Johnson and Ebron here at the top of the receiving list. Our coverage today was horrible. And, I mean, we've done a great job of getting pressure. Our front seven has been fantastic. It's the secondary, even with two interceptions, who I feel like have really let us down. And we have a lot of major questions to answer here at week eight at the trade deadline. We're four and three, second in the division. Our next two games are against the six and one Dallas Cowboys. So we better figure some things out quickly or else it could get ugly. Here at the trade deadline, I think it makes sense for us to be buyers, go out and get some talent. But I don't really know where to improve this team. I don't think there are any like glaring holes, but... I feel like there's something missing, and there just seems to be something off about this team. I don't know what it is, but there's just like, it's just weird. I don't really know how to describe it. This team just doesn't seem right, and I don't really know how to fix it. The offense has been good, but not great. The defense has been good at times, bad other times. I feel like we need to add something to the secondary, but our secondary is already supremely talented, so I really don't know what to do. I think I'm going to need your guys' help. Let me know what you think we should do down below in the comments for the trade deadline. We're also going to look at some moves around the rest of the NFL, which should be a lot of fun. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.